welcome you all to the second session of learning of business ethics today we will be discussing on the second module that is framing business ethics csr stakeholders and citizenship the lessons that we are going to discuss now are mainly adapted from the book of Business Ethics by Crane and Mathen, second edition, Oxford University publication. So, in the last lecture, we have come to understand business ethics as a field of study and practice where we try to study the business situations, activities and decisions and try to find out what are morally right or wrong with respect to a particular business situation. We have also discussed about how the situations are different for different natures of organization. We have discussed four different organizational types and the differences in business ethics situations and activities and decisions across these four types of organizations. We have also studied the context of globalization as where uh, business takes place and the ethical issues related to it. We have also studied sustainability as a key goal for business ethics, where we are discussed about sustainable development, the concept of sustainability and sustainable business practices. Today, we, we are going to discuss about the framing of business ethics. Here, we are trying to discuss mainly about five modules which consists or sub modules which consists of module 1 which discusses about what is corporation, module 2 which will discuss about corporate social responsibility, module 3 which will discuss about the stakeholder theory of the firm, module 4 will discuss about corporate accountability and the firm as a political actor and module 5 will discuss about corporate citizenship behavior. So, let us start with the discussion of what is corporation. So, generally when we talk of business ethics and the responsibilities of a corporation the question which immediately comes to our mind is what is a corporation how it is uh, different from other uh, business organizations which are there is it not the corporation by taking in resources from the society giving employment to people of the society in the process of producing the goods or services and paying taxes to the government are doing a major part of their responsibility towards the society. Do they actually have any sort of moral or social responsibility uh, that we are discussing under the corporate moral responsibility or social responsibility. There are different views which have come which to defend either to defend like yes corporates do have moral and social responsibility or to tell no corporates do not have any moral and social responsibility just like individual entities like human being have. So, to discuss over this issue of whether corporates do have moral or social responsibility, first it is essential to understand 
what we understand by what is a corporation. So, when we understand what is a corporation, we have to keep in mind like all businesses like businesses where there is a sole trader are not corporates. Also, all corporates like universities or like NGOs if formed at a very high large level, these are not for these are not still labeled as for profit uh, businesses. So, we have to understand like all businesses are not corporates and also all corporates are not commercial businesses or for profit businesses. We will be discussing ethical responsibilities, corporate social responsibilities, what you are trying uh, to discuss here mainly about the focus will be mainly on organizations which are for profit organizations, but we will also try to focus on extend our discussions when we are discussing business ethics and right and wrong for the activities, practices and decisions taken in business scenario. We will extend our discussion not only to for profit organizations, but we will extend it to all types of organizations where certain practices are followed to move forward with the purposes for which the organizations are formed and how the transactions takes place over there. So, we will widen the scope of discussion to all types of organizations where there are transactions going on and there are practices followed to reach certain vision, mission and objectives for which the organizations are formed and they deliver certain things to the society either in terms of goods or services. So, let us now define, try to understand what we mean by what is a corporation. So, we can see like corporation is mainly defined in terms of its legal entity and the assets which are possessed by the corporate. So, when we are talking of the legal status or corporation as a legal entity, we understand that corporates are regarded as artificial persons in the eyes of law, means it has its existence which is not limited to the existence of its shareholders, its consumers or its employees and it has what we call a perpetual presence or succession in the sense even if the share one or one or the share other shareholders die, employees leave, the consumers quit, the corporate does not cease to exist. It has its own existence, its own entity and the only the people need to be replaced. If one shareholder is quitting or leaving to whatever reason or consumers are leaving or uh, employees are leaving, the only thing that the corporate needs to do is to replace these people, but its existence does not cease or become non-existent due to the absence of one or some of these people. So, we want come to define corporation as artificial persons in the eyes of law which has its own existence. Next, corporations are 
notionally owned by shareholders, but they independently exist of them. Means, the though the own shareholders own the corporation, but it means they own only the shares of the corporation and are in return they have the benefit of the dividend or a say in the decision making of the organization to certain extent. But the corporation itself has its own assets in terms of the physical infrastructure, in terms of machineries, in terms of land and other things. So, these are the assets which the organization possesses and which the corporate possesses and it is not possessed by the shareholders. Also, the consumers enter into a contract with the corporation and not with the shareholders. So, the corporation though notionally owned by shareholders has has an existence which is independent of the shareholders, because it has its own assets. Third, managers and directors have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the investment of the shareholders. This means that the managers and directors have a responsibility to see that the money invested by the shareholders are invested in a proper way, so that it yields return for the shareholders and they have to be trustworthy to the shareholders and their money of the shareholders. So, it is understood managers and directors have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the investment of shareholders. So, in a nutshell, the legal entity or the status of the corporation as an artificial person, which is independent of the uh, entity of its shareholders, its consumers, its employees and others and the assets which are possessed by the corporation, these two qualities primarily define the qualities of a corporation. Next, after we have defined the corporation in this way, next important question which obviously comes to understand if corporation has an artificial existence like a person, then does it have moral responsibility and obligations just like a person have it. Let us look into this issue now. When we are discussing can corporations have social responsibility. So, First, in this context, we will discuss whether corporations do have a moral responsibility. According to a classic paper in 1970 by Milton Friedman, he discussed about the fact like only human beings have a moral responsibility for their actions, because corporations are artificial entities and so human beings actually make the decisions which are made by the corporates. So, it is ultimately the human being who makes the decision. So, whether any decision is right and wrong that onus lies on the individual. So, only human beings have a moral responsibility 
for their action. It is a manager's second point, according to Friedman, is it is a manager's responsibility to act solely in the interest of shareholders, because what we saw as a part of definition of what is a corporation, we found like it is a manager's fiduciary responsibility to take care of the shareholders money. So, when we are talking of the moral responsibility of the corporation or the social responsibility of the corporation, it is according to Friedman, it is limited towards the money and protection of the shareholders money, because the fiduciary responsibility, the managers and directors have a fiduciary responsibility for the shareholders money. Third, whenever we are talking of uh, social problems and corporate um, social responsibility, it um, comes to the fact, according to Friedman, that the managers or the corporation per se do not have the social responsibility towards the greater society at large, because they are not meant for it or they are not properly trained for it also, because according to him it lies in the province of the government per se or the political leaders per se, who are properly trained for taking up issues related to social issues and problems, and it is beyond the province of corporation to deal with these type of issues. So, in his classic paper, The Social Responsibility of Business, um, I, he stated that the social responsibility of business is to increase its profits. Next, we are going to discuss about corporate social responsibility. And before we are going to discuss this corporate um, social responsibility, again we have to make up a case for uh, advocating that yes, corporates do have a social responsibility. In that case, first as we have established the um, moral responsibility, uh, legal res um, entity of the corporate as a separate entity for the, which is beyond the entity of its shareholders or its consumers or uh, the employees. If we can establish like yes, um, corporations also have a moral entity, which is independent of the agency of its shareholders and its consumers and employees, then we can tell con the corporation is also morally and socially responsible for its activities. In the way to argue that, in the way to advocate that thing, first we have to understand the mm, internal decision making system which are there in place in the organization, which are institutionalized internal decision making mechanism, which are there in the organization, which helps in the decision making process. So, it can be argued that every organization has an organizational chart and an internal decision making process internal decision making system, which influences 
or facilitates the decision making process and which is institutionalized by the nature of policies framed by the organization which acts as a guideline regarding what are the expected right and wrong for these what the organization thinks to be right and wrong. So, when the decision making processes get institutionalized through this internal decision making mechanisms present in the organization, which are evident not only from the organizational chart, which shows how the information flows throughout or the decision flows throughout the organization, but there are systems in place, which help in this decision support systems. Then, uh, though individual is taking the decisions, but it no longer remains to be a one particular individual, who is responsible for the particular decision being made, but it is a well like networked mechanism, where group decisions and organizations input into the decision through its policies and practices comes to play, where we can also tell it is not only the individual, but the organization through its chart, organizational chart and the decision support mechanisms present within the organization influences the what actually gets decided by the human being present in the organization and that is how it has a major responsibility in deciding what is right and wrong. Also, the organizational culture, which speaks about the beliefs, the values of the organization, gives an evidence about what the organization thinks about how to do certain things, what is the standpoint it takes about its certain practices to be followed and what happens to individuals who follow the culture and what happens to people who question this culture. And so, this all this together defines the organization's take on what they feel or what they want to propagate, what is right or wrong according to them. So, if we are focusing on these two things like the internal decisions mechanism within the organization, organizational chart and the organizational culture, these two talks of the systems present in the organization, which to some extent makes the organization also responsible for the ethical decisions taken, the moral decisions right and wrong taken for the organization. Though we cannot tell like the weightage is same like when you are talking of individual moral responsibility and the corporate's moral responsibility, because it is ultimately given a certain system in place, given a certain culture in place. At the end of the day, it is always a particular individual or group of individual who gives certain decisions or who takes certain decisions, who interpret the system and the situations around and take certain decisions. So, we just cannot tell like the owners or the weightage of the responsibility is equally same for both, but we also cannot deny the fact that the corporates also do have certain moral responsibility when it has its existence as an artificial entity, we drawing an analogy with that organizational culture can be 
drawn in analogy with the personal value system of the individual and organizational culture is the value system of the artificial entity which is the corporate and the internal decision making systems present are just like the ways that the individual also processes information and takes a certain decision. So, so these are just like we process information and take decision um, through the input throughput and output is the decision that we take. So, likely the uh, in internal decision making mechanisms that are present in the organization are its decision support system and it, it is the path through which and the mechanism through which the organization is also thinking or facilitating thinking and we can take like it is a decision making mechanism for the organization and if you are comparing them, then you can understand this also gives a artificial, this is the part of the artificial and existence of the organization and we can obviously tell like yes corporations also do have some moral responsibility. So, when we have stated for these two things, now we move forward to the discussion of corporate social responsibility. In corporate social responsibility, when we are talking of so what we can think of is why do corporations have social responsibility, because in Friedman's when we talked of Friedman's thing uh, viewpoints we discussed like according to Friedman he told like the corporations um, do have a limited responsibility uh, to the limited responsibility which is limited to the uh, to the trust for the shareholders means the shareholders have to trusted them with their money and it is a limited responsibility of the uh, organization to take care of the money uh, that the shareholders have trusted them with and to invest it properly, so that they get proper return for the shareholders and they are in agency relationship with them. So, if that is done properly, then why do we uh, take care of, why should we think something for the social responsibility? for the extended society at um, large. So, this when we are discussing about corporate um, social responsibility, maybe we have to broaden our perspective of uh, discussing about the whom the corporation is accountable to is we have to shift our concept from the stake uh, like shareholder orientation to the concept of stakeholder orientation. So, when you are shifting our concept from shareholder orientation to stakeholder orientation and we incorporate society as one of the important stakeholders of the whole business, then we can discuss about the corporate social responsibility, where we find yes, the corporation is also responsible to the society at large. So, next we will try to focus on the details of first we will try to argue, do uh, corporates have a social responsibility, which I have already discussed about. Next, we will try to see, why do we feel 
like the corporations do have a social responsibility. Is it due to some moral reasons or is it due to some reasons which are confined to the specific business itself and then we will move forward to define the different nature or the different uh, steps of corporate social responsibility following a certain model and then we move forward with what it gives to the organization or to the society at large. Thank you.